This video is an overview of alkali aggregate reaction, the silent killer of concrete. My name is Tyler Lay, and I'm here to help you protect your concrete. Have you ever had a concrete structure? It's been in place for years. You're so proud of it. You're so happy. You're so excited to go take your friends to see it because that's what we all do with our concrete structures, right? And then you show up one day after several years and it looks like this. Or maybe like this. Or maybe like this. <laughs> What causes this? What happened? All those pictures were examples of alkali aggregate reaction. And that's a deterioration where the cement paste actually attacks the rock inside of concrete. The concrete's hard. It's been in place for a while. You think everything's great and then it starts to crack. Now, alkali aggregate reaction is kind of an umbrella term. It's kind of like soda pop right? With Coke or Pepsi or Sprite or 7-Up or whatever your favorite carbonated beverage is. It's an umbrella term that covers two different terms, ASR and ACR, alkali silica reaction and alkali carbonate reaction. So AAR doesn't happen. It's either one of these two. So let's compare them so we understand what they're all about. With ASR, the alkalis react to the aggregates and form the gel that's expansive. I'm gonna make a new video about that coming up that explains it in much more detail. In ACR, the alkalis attack the carbonates inside the aggregates and it causes a local carbonation, like an internal carbonation attack inside the concrete. What do the cracks look like? They're like randomly distributed on the surface. Some people call this map cracking because they think it to their eye, it looks like a bunch of rivers on a map. What? Yeah, like this. See all these rivers randomly going all these different places? Doesn't it remind you of this? So how common is it? ASR is everywhere. There are some places where all of the aggregate has ASR problems. ACR is extremely rare. And most people, they just avoid it. If they find a certain quarry that causes that in concrete, they just close it. They just don't even use it because that's how damaging it is. Can we design our concrete to stop it? With ASR, the answer is yes, we can. With ACR, sadly, the answer is no. There's not much we can do about it. But are there ways to test for it? In both these cases, yes, there is. How about other differences? ASR, you've got to have a certain kind of rock. It's got to be silicious in nature. Usually, ASR happens after 10 to 20 years of service. It depends how moist it is and how hot it is on wherever you live. And when cracks get really extreme, gel starts oozing out of them. Let me show you some examples. ASR cracks will start out looking like this, and you'll start to see some stains, or it looks like someone has outlined the outside of the cracks with maybe a pen. And then over time, gel starts shooting or oozing out of the cracks. ACR, you've got to have used a dolomitic limestone in your concrete mixture. It can happen pretty rapidly after one to two years. And around the aggregates, you'll see something called a carbonation rim. What? Well, if you take phenolphthalein, that's like a pH indicator, and you spray the inside of your concrete, you'll see in some areas it's pink. That's good. That's a high pH. And in other areas where the attack is happening, you'll actually see low pH. The concrete is carbonated from the inside out. I've made a whole other video about carbonation attack and I'll link to it below. This is bad for concrete. It can start to cause corrosion of our rebar, cracking, and overall just attack of the cement paste. Now, what causes this? This stems something called alkalis. Remember, that's the first word. Alkali aggregate reaction, alkali silica reaction, alkali carbonate reaction. They're potassium or sodium ions that are dissolved in the pore solution. Where are they from? They could be from cement, it could be fly ash, admixtures, outside water, but mainly they're from your cement. Primarily, they're caused by the cement. They're impurities that go into the manufacturing of the cement itself. They can come from your raw materials or they can actually come from the fuel that you use to make your cement. Fuel? What are you talking about? You know that flame inside the kiln when you make cement? Well, you need fuel to make it. And that flame 
can place alkalis in your cement clinker as you're manufacturing it. But are there good things about alkalis? Well, they raise your pH, and there's good things about that. It can reduce your corrosion. It can reduce your carbonation, at least external carbonation. It can increase your strength gain, and it can increase your admixture efficiency. So yeah, there's tons of good stuff about alkalis, but there's some bad things, because that high pH, it'll actually eat certain rocks. It's kind of like Drano inside your concrete. You know Drano? That's the stuff you use to clean out your clogged sink. It eats the stuff out of your pipes and it leaves them clean. It does the same thing inside concrete. These alkalis, they eat your rocks and cause certain chemical changes to happen. Potassium is the principal alkali in cement. Potassium seems to be much more damaging than sodium and the sodium potassium ratio just varies. So how do we express this? Well, a mill sheet, the cement mill sheet, the little piece of paper that tells you about your cement, they express all your alkalis in terms of sodium, something called the sodium equivalent alkali content. And it's expressed by this equation. You take your weight percentage of your sodium and you take your weight percentage of your potassium and the potassium you multiply by 0.658. Where's that from? That's the molar ratio of your sodium to potassium. You're basically changing all your potassium into sodium, and that's how you, you can kind of express it easily. Now this can vary between about 0.2% and about 1.3%, so all over the place, but most of the cements are right around 0.5. Now historically, people thought that if your alkali was less than 0.6%, then you would not have ASR problems, but that's not right. Instead, what you have to do is you have to find the amount of alkali in your cement and the amount of cement going into your concrete and multiply them together and find how much your alkali loading is. And you want that to be less than about five pounds or three kilograms per either cubic yard or cubic meter. In summary, ASR and ACR are caused by the deterioration of the aggregate within your concrete. And aggregates are a major part of our concrete and we cannot make durable concrete without durable aggregates. Hey. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you like, please subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and leave me a comment below about a question that you'd like me to answer. Take care, everybody. Bye.